Howdy, everybody. <laughs> Sorry about the hiccup. I don't know what the hell went on there. That was really weird. I started the stream. I didn't have anything crash or anything like that. And then suddenly it said streamed zero minutes ago. So. Howdy, everybody. I'm not really sure Sorry what's going on there. Jordan, we're going to get a little echo. Let me turn this down. Jordan's posting on Instagram with an updated link. Sorry. Sorry, everybody. How's it going? Let me pull up chat here on my phone. We were just trying to farm a little extra engagement. Sorry, y'all. But it says right here, one second streamed on the other one. So that's odd. I don't know what the hell that's about. Yeah, that was really weird and annoying. So I just had to set up a new one like really quick. Um, pull up the chat here. How's everybody's week going? I'm going to give it a couple, just a couple extra minutes since we missed people. Since YouTube decided to freaking shit itself. Shit its pants. Hi from Minnesota, where we nurses just voted to strike. Hell yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. Everybody should strike. Everybody should join a union. Did I get any know. new tattoos? No, but I usually don't wear tank tops, so it's probably like more obvious now. Yeah, right? I did. My hairstylist Looks today good. took a picture of my bluey tattoo, which I tell you, I get more comments on my bluey tattoo than any other tattoo that I have. I know. It's like <laughs> everybody <laughs> spent so much loves on this it. other shit. You should have just gone with a bluey tattoo to start with. I guess. It went doo doo. Person I live with got COVID and now I'm waiting till I get it. But not positive yet. That fucking sucks. Sorry about that. Thank you for the Jenna Marbles comment. It warms my soul. Watch you on the big screen with my cat. Ugh. He should. <laughs> he or she should block my face. Cause I got I have this big zit right here. That's gross. Love that for me. Stress zits. Honestly, it's been like just a, a day for me. I almost got sideswiped twice on the road. One time at 80 miles an hour. So, love that. Show off the bluey tattoo, Joe. Let's see oh, it. See it's actually it kind of topical because I wanted to talk about something today in regards to bluey. But we will wait just a couple more minutes uh, for people to jump in. Bluey's hometown. Hell yeah. While I'm doing that, let me offline this other or unlist this other video. What's that about Brisbane? Somebody from Brisbane? I should be editing this week's video, but I'm going to do this instead. Hell yeah, James. Hell yeah. We encourage this procrastination. Welcome to Procrastination Station, Population James, and oftentimes me. I spent this afternoon trying to figure out why I couldn't get uh, OBS Virtual Cam to appear on Discord for our watch party this Friday night, which I mentioned. Um, it's going to be on Discord because it is copyrighted material, so... But if you are not able to attend, you don't have Discord or the likes, I have it set up through OBS so that I can record it and then upload it to our Dropbox and you can watch it there. Hang out with us, even if it's at an arm's distance, an, an arm's length, something like that. I was supposed to be unlisting this flop of a video. Okay. How is stream quality? Because mine keeps going shitty for a second is everything still yeah okay i can for you see guys? the the little square over there flashing to yellow and red so hopefully the stream strength is okay currently i can't get youtube to load so love that love that for me okay this has gotten unlisted no i'm just gonna delete it totally okay good because our our internet has been weird today. 
weird as shit. Okay. Sick. Well, should we just go over to the bluey thing? Yeah, if you'd like. All these comments just kind of end up passing by because I'm not clicked on the window. Let's get this first thing pulled up. <laughs> I double checked for those of you that are looking out for me. Bless you. I checked to make sure that our Capri Suns were not contaminated and they are safe. We get we only get the strawberry kiwi ones and the cherry ones are the ones that have like cleaning solution in them. Which is just I <laughs> love that. Really awesome. Um so we are safe. Nasty cleaning products. Okay. Stream quality is a little stop and go. Does it stop altogether? That's that's the better question. While we're talking about that and getting things straightened out, uh, first thing we talk, wanted to talk about was related to Bluey. If you do not know, Bluey, let me just pull up some stuff here. Oh, it just brings us to the wiki. Here we go. What's up? Bluey is a animated children's show. It is from Australia. It is the best children's show that our son has ever chosen to watch. So love that. It's fun to watch and it's, you know, it's all good and everything like that. Bluey recently came out with a new season... Uh, or it was added to Disney Plus. The season started coming out like November last year, but just got it added to Disney Plus. So it's back in the news over here in the United States again. Anyway, the, what we wanted to talk about, because, I mean, it's great. Go watch it. Disney Plus. Uh, we recommended it to James and um, Jen and James from Fundy Fridays. And they're enjoying it. They're, I mean, it is a show that's for all ages, really. It's enjoyable. Everybody can watch it. Um, James says, Bluey is the seriously the best idea that anyone has ever had for a TV show ever. Cheers to that. Hell yeah. So, because of that, um, where was I going with that? <laughs> the church article? Yes. Everybody talks about it. It's big i there was recently a npr spot about it so shout out to them and uh so jordan sent me this article the other day and this is not any regular just average article right this is this is mormonism right here lds living i don't know if lds living is technically a part yep it is here we go division of deseret book company which is a part of Bonneville distribution, which is owned or whatever by the, the parent company is, which is owned by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, the Mormon Church. Uh, so LDS Living has been around for a good while, but uh, fifteen times Bluey taught the gospel, and not just for kids. And I didn't read this at all. Jordan just sent it to me on Instagram, and honestly, I was seeing red. I could not believe that they would take one of my favorite things, one of my son's favorite things, and just force Mormonism into it. One. Just the, the two things on the side are a really cringe picture of Jesus, and then why this are squirrels ad. splooting across the U.S.? Robert Boyd Fine Art. Oh, there you go. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Oh, I wonder. Oh, Boyd. Last name. I was thinking Boyd K. Packer. Why are squirrels splooting across the U.S. and what gospel lessons can they teach? <laughs> they are really grasping at fucking straws. That's very important information. Oh, my God, dude. Why are squirrels splooting? 
That's hilarious. Anyway, let's just look through some of these things here. In most homes, one or two TV shows tend to make their way to the top of the preference list. Let's see if I can zoom this in a little bit. In our home, the children's show Bluey reigns supreme. I mean, why wouldn't it? And not just because two year old my two year old son loves it. My husband and I are even bigger fans, but for good reason. Bluey's an incredible heartwarming incredibly heartwarming show about the adventures of a lovable family of dogs. Each eight minute episode includes an inspiring truth or life lesson, highlighting the importance of family, love, support, kindness, sharing, inclusivity, patience, friendship, joy, and more. Here are fourteen of our family's favorite gospel centered lessons. From the first two seasons of this fun and uplifting show, organized by theme and episode, by the end of this list, you may find yourself wanting to watch, catch a few episodes of Bluey. Damn, at least link to the Disney Plus site so people can watch it if you're going to do that. So they have a couple, it looks like they have a couple of just categories here. Progress, hope. God's love. Oh I don't know. God. I think let's focus on the God's love one. That's a stretch. Um, I can think of a couple episodes that are particularly flat pack is one where the takeaway comes basically from the paradigm that you enter in with and which you watch the show or the episode with. Wouldn't you agree? I'm yeah. kind of surprised that that one didn't make it on here. Yeah um let's see so if anybody anybody is familiar with bluey then you can probably take a look at this and go oh brother oh god jump scare sorry oh, sorry <laughs> <clears throat> will you mute this i can hear myself and yes like, sorry sorry i'm like going insane but in butterflies bluey and her friend judo judo get frustrated with bingo for being so little and taking so long to play their game but afterwards Witnessing unkindness, Bluey learns empathy and finds a way to include her little sister in the game again. The lesson demonstrates that the gospel principle that all are alike unto God, even when someone plays or looks differently than you. Oh my lord, that's well, okay. a stretch. Yeah, so the thing is, Bingo looks just like Bluey, she's just red. <laughs> and in the end of the episode, Bluey kind of, well kind of gives uh, Judo her just desserts by giving her the cold shoulder at the same time right before they make up and they all play together. So this is definitely a big... Yeah, poor little bug on the wall. Okay, so this one, I'm reading this one right now. This is a... The Hammer Barn one? <coughs> I'm going to have a barn. Even a bigger stretch. So uh, Hammer Barn is their fictional hardware store in Bluey. Yeah, it's basically like a Home Depot. I, I don't know what the, the Australian equivalent would be. But. So Bluey and Bingo get in a fight because of unfairness and jealousy, but their mom teaches them an important lesson in gratitude. Just try to be happy with what you've got, okay? Elder Holland shared in 2002. I testify that he loves each of us insecurities, anxieties, self-image, and all. <laughs> he doesn't measure our talents or our looks. He doesn't measure our professions or possessions. He cheers on every runner, calling out the races against get, against sin and not against each other. Ugh. Poor Hecuba. <laughs> Are they, is this author just going to overlook that Hecuba was just brutally murdered in this episode? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the little garden gnome got was the one who got it so r.i.p hecuba okay here's the the famous sleepy time jam jen and james unfortunately this was the first one that they watched which is basically watching bluey in the form of drinking from the fire hose basically <laughs> in when it comes to emotional shit sleepy time in this fan favorite episode four-year-old bingo is having a dream and mom who is uh nice get an editor get an editor for real is depicted as the warm inviting sun in the dream again what the Jesus. fuck did what did you write this on notepad there's <laughs> nothing <laughs> tells bingo remember i'll always be here for you even if you can't see me because i love you the same is true of our loving heavenly father even when we can't see him he 
is always there for us and he loves us infinitely as president thomas s monson said god's love is there for you whether or not you feel you deserve it is simply always there deserve love this is terrible dude i hate this so this much. is such a fumbled bag right here because she's literally bingo's mom and it would be such a layup if they were like oh this is just like heavenly mother but they're not allowed to do that I was going to say, that's too much. <clears throat> Unfortunately, we put our little one to bed rather early, or rather late, and he's having some trouble going to sleep. So I am going to go. We're going to read about splooting situated. squirrels while you're gone. <laughs> yeah, here, let me throw it on the. <laughs> I'm the controller here. Jordan doesn't know how to do any of this. So no, I I'll don't. be right back. Please pause. Will you zoom in a little bit before you go? Thank you. Mama, what are you doing? I just am amazed by this in so many ways. Okay, let's read about splooting squirrels, okay, shall we? I love this little splooting squirrel right here. Okay, so a recent Slate article reported on the phenomenon of squirrels splooting from the record-breaking heat across the country. Okay, well, doesn't that answer the question right there of why they're splooting? Like, why? Wasn't that the whole point of the article? <laughs> oh, my God, I can't. Okay, yeah, why are squirrels splooting across the U.S. and what gospel lesson can they teach? Okay. So we've already established in the first sentence that it's because of the heat. Um, splooting is when they're laying on the ground um like this like so um <laughs> so splooting squirrels and other animals can splute by lying on their stomachs with all four limbs splayed wide so new york city parks tweeted an explanation of the phenomenon this week apparently in response to increased concern by park visitors who couldn't figure out what was happening okay so if you see a squirrel lying down like this, don't worry. It's just fine. <laughs> it makes me so happy that people are so concerned about this, that they're contacting like the parks department. <laughs> the squirrels are laying down. Why? Explain it to me. Jen, you asked me a question. Did, what did you say? Jordan, can we get sealed platonically? Yes. Yes, we can. So... Only if James and I can get silk platonic. <laughs> okay, so look at the question. Why are they splooting across the U.S. and what gospel lesson that they can, what can they teach, right? So why are they splooting? Are They're you following? Hot. They literally answer it in the first sentence. Splooting from record-breaking heat. So oh, what's okay. the point of reading the rest of the article? Okay. <laughs> Are they just trying to fit current events into things that just don't match up? Oh my gosh. I feel this squirrel. The squirrel is giving me such good vibes. This is their chief of police, it sounds like, was leaving City Hall after a meeting and found this squirrel trying to cool off. Thought he was hurt slash dead at first, <laughs> but that wasn't the case. He got up as I approached and reassumed his position as soon as I walked away. Funny. Funny. That's like laying down on the hardwood floor when it's really hot. Or not wood. I guess it's laminate, but whatever. For God so loved the world that he splooted his only begotten son of God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Did you see what James said? Oh, no, I missed it. What youth pastor wrote this? This is a bear here. splooting. Does it have to be platonic? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Okay, so here we have a bear sploot. Oh, hell yeah. I'm still waiting to figure out how we connect this back to That's the church. That's a dangerous fucking sploot. So they're on to something, and maybe there's even a gospel lesson to be learned. Sometimes life gets exhausting with the heat of trials and hardship beating us down. When that happens, oh God, we may you need to... almost made me do a spit take right there. <laughs> Jesus. We may need to slow up, hunker down, and rest. 
Okay, and then she just goes on to tell a story that has nothing to do with squirrels. Brooke said, why does splooting look exactly how it sounds? Splooting is basically an onomatopoeia, honestly. It really is. <laughs> um, so now we're into a gospel story about Elijah. Okay, so we're like in deep with Elijah. Did Elijah sploot when the <laughs> angel came to him? <laughs> I'm still waiting for how they're going to connect this back. Um, will anybody uh, Photoshop Moses splooting in front of the burning bush? <laughs> how is this even remotely necessary? It's not, but here's how we connect it all back again. It seems that the country squirrels have the right idea, and maybe we ought to follow their example. When life heats up with trials and hardships, it's, it's okay to take a rest. <laughs> God. This is embarrassing. It's okay to take a rest. Jake, Jake. Franson. What are you doing? Oh, he has a picture Jake with Donnie and Marie. Masters. This is what a master's level writer well, is BYU. writing about. This is embarrassing, honestly. Yeah, there he is. Oh, wait. he. This. These are just articles he wrote. Oh, okay. I was like, wow. Jake Franson. Shame on you, friend. <coughs> what about the, the other person? Haley Lundberg. Haley Lundberg. Oh, she's the fucking editor and she's got those errors in it? Wow. Dude, Haley, get on that. I can I can pass you off. I will get you a copy of Microsoft Office if you need it. Well, we'll hook you up with Grammarly. Seriously, she worked at Boncom where she assisted with influencer and social media marketing and social media. I don't media even know what Boncom is. Is I that like that Bonbons that. digitally? Bonbons. She doesn't have any uh, schooling credentials. That makes me feel like she probably got like a bachelor's from BYU Idaho because that's how she writes. Oof. Hey, it's okay if you have a Takes degree no from one. BYU. It's okay. No, I said BYU. I. I'm just feisty because I go to the rival school. I am feisty because I also went to BYU. I and it is garbage. Bong com. Bong com. She worked at Bong com. Well, she can't be holding the recommend then. Okay, well, LDS Living is embarrassing. Embarrassing. Go to their latest. What are they currently reporting on? Let's check it out. Official names announced for Idaho, New Idaho. And oh, Mitt Michael. Romney went to is the Washington, D.C. dedication? Whoa, that wow. is groundbreaking since he probably attends the temple regularly. Who oh, cares? and he went on Fox News? Color me surprised. Color me surprised. Is it? How did I know that it was going to be the the Teton River Temple? It's the Titty River Temple. The Titty River Temple. Dude, they did that to themselves, honestly. They really did. We got the splooting squirrel. Remembering Holly. That really is the most one. bizarre one out of all of these, is yeah. the squirrel. There's got to be other ones that are just off the chain. Off the fucking wall, here's... What are the odds that they did something related to James Webb telescope? <clears throat> Church issues statement on abuse line. Oh, That's a is, good one. I think we pulled this up. I'm we? pretty sure. Uh, well, it must. It's probably the same one that we read. Mutual splooting. If we read it from another. Oh, yeah. It was Deseret News. It's probably the same shit. Oh, okay. It's the same parent company. Oh, there's a LDS celebrity. Somebody that they can talk about. Oh, the golfer Tony Finau. What's anyway, the? Fuck oh, this. I'm thinking of Tiger Woods. Okay. Anyway, we have a lot to talk about. We'll keep moving. That that we kind of spent a lot of time on that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bluey. I mean, not really exactly what I would consider Mormon media or even like Mormon adjacent media. But they'll try it's to make it so. They're like, oh, here's the box of Bluey. And we're going to take this. We're going to shove it in there. Aggressive. That was aggressive. I got water <laughs> all over my head. That wasn't very empty. James says, I loved reading the Sploot and Squirrels of Titty River as a child. The Sploot and Squirrels of Titty River. Of Titty River Temple. <laughs> it looks like our Wi-Fi connectivity went down a tick a minute ago. So if it's... 
Oh, it's because I got aggressive, probably. Probably. If it got I'm a little spotty, this. that's why. Hopefully it'll come. Bethany's back. from Brisbane. I Hello. One of my favorite little bits of sound that makes me have the happy chemicals is when Lucky's dad, Pat, sings that one John Denver song oh about Brisbane. <laughs> I won't sing it, but... You'll hear it for days when we watch yeah. that episode. Dr. Pepper was achieved. Nice. Okay, uh, next thing that we want to do. Do we want to talk about Jeanette McCurdy first? Yeah, pull up that article first. Okay, we'll pull this up. I don't think I want to show the clip because we're going to get claimed. Who's it from? Uh, her podcast. Do you think we'll get claimed? I imagine. Is it on YouTube? It's Why on is our Wi-Fi such shit today? God. I swear we have the shittiest Wi-Fi of all time here. It is literally absolute Stream is garbage. dead right now. Jenna, I want to hear your controversial opinions of Pass the Parcel. Let's hear it. Okay. Facebook watch? I don't know. I think we'd be okay. If you think we're good. I'll chance it. We're far enough from the stream. It probably probably would be fine. As long as there's no... You shouldn't be able to hear this. No music. No, no music. Okay. We'll let that. We'll let that go then. Y'all got too many followers. We could have like five and the Wi-Fi would shit itself. Right. It's like so bad. All right. Let's talk about Jeanette McCurdy. Okay, so I don't want to read this whole article, but just as a reference point, if you didn't know Jeanette McCurdy, who was famous for being Sam on iCarly, um, is actually ex-Mormon. Uh, she grew up with a not super intensely Mormon, but still went to church Mormon family. Um, and she, if you didn't know, she just released a book um, called, what is it? I'm happy my mom died. Yeah, or I'm glad my mother died. Something that I can really relate to. So, spicy. <laughs> her mom was like mega super abusive, and so she wrote this memoir about herself and her experiences. And it is that girl's been through some shit, man. And I haven't even read it yet. Somebody just said I'd look like Dave Mustaine, and that is actually I take great <laughs> offense to that. <laughs> <laughs> sorry anyway so she wrote this book it just came out like a week or so ago i ordered it it's on back order right now because i ordered it from amazon so i don't think i'll get it till like next month or october but she was ex-mormon and i thought this article was interesting will you scroll down a little bit scrolling what is what is going on here <laughs> why did we get like the weirdest freaking ads <clears throat> And before anybody says, oh, it's your browsing history, I'm on a private window, so. Okay, stop there. So the only thing that's like, that I wanted to mention in this article, but I didn't want people to think I was just like pulling this out of my butt. But the first paragraph said, Jeanette McCurdy said her mother discouraged her from befriending her iCarly co-star Miranda Cosgrove because she doesn't believe in God. So in her memoir released Tuesday, I think that was either a week ago or two weeks, she described being raised in a Mormon household how her mom pushed her into acting at six and how her life changed when she was cast as Sam and Nickelodeon's iCarly. So, yeah, it's how sold out everywhere. How started? iCarly? Yeah. I don't know. Look it up. I think she's my age. If Maybe maybe a couple years older. Let's see. I don't know if I spelled that right. Oh, I added an A. Let's see. Okay. 1992. 19, okay, so she's three years older than me, and I, Carly, started in 2007. I was 12 in 2007, so she was 15 when it started. She was 15. Um, so she talks about being Mormon, from my understanding, a little bit in her book. Like I said, I haven't read it, so I don't know how much detail she goes into it, um, but... 
I think there is probably much to say about the connection between um, Mormonism and abusive parents. And I know people are like, wow, you're making broad generalizations, but there's definitely at least a pattern here. Um, and I, I relate to her, her ideas as far as this goes a lot. So this is super interesting. Okay. Do you want to play that clip or no? I say let's go for it. Okay. Um. So this clip that we might get claimed for is from Jeanette's podcast called Empty Inside. I did not realize that she had a podcast. Let's get the sound on. Make sure you can hear it. Mormon church, they teach you about this thing called the still small voice. You're supposed to listen for it and it kind of guides you to do what's right. I confused my anxiety with this still small voice. Oh my goodness. I had OCD as a kid and Mm -hmm. I'd be like, okay, so my still small voice is telling me that I need to touch this thing 10 times before I touch this other thing 10 times so that I can then go to the door and open this five times because the still small voice is telling me that I need to do these things or else my mom's going to die. So they talk about feeling the spirit people would feel when they would go and talk, you know, at church where they would cry, you know, like essentially led by the spirit. And I never once felt the spirit because I really took a logical approach from a very early age. But, you know, for me, feeling the spirit, I felt was so intertwined with hyper emotion in situations that were encouraged to, you know, make me feel the spirit. Essentially, I more so just felt like this is trying to extremify my emotions to mm-hmm. where I kind of let logic to the side. So this podcast episode, I listened to the majority of it. It's really interesting. Um, if you're not familiar with Hiram, he's a really, really big uh, YouTuber. I'm pretty I've sure. Never heard of him. Really? Yeah, never. He's a really he big YouTuber. Isn't in my niche. No, he's at least skincare. from where I grew. Yeah. Look at my skin. Shit. (laughs) So he has millions of subscribers. So he's really popular. But he also um, used to be Mormon. I don't know if he has any podcasts like or anything specifically where he's talked about like his journey out of Mormonism. I don't I haven't kept track of his stuff like super extensively. But um, he at least talked about it in this episode. He was Mormon, grew up Mormon. His parents were like in leadership positions and was pretty intensely Mormon. And when he came out, uh, they actually ended up disowning him. And as of this podcast episode, which was in 2020, um, he said that they had not spoken since. So that's kind of heartbreaking. Um, But on the other side of the coin, there is still hope because publicly... Um, what's his name from Neon Trees? Tyler Glenn. Tyler Glenn and his his mom was like extremely hurt that he left the church, right? Yeah, she was. And recently, uh, we saw a picture of him and his mother celebrating Pie and Beer Day, <coughs> um, or for the Mormons in the audience, Pie Pioneer Day. <laughs> I was like, what is it called? I don't know. I think she's still. I think I don't know if she stopped talking to him. To stop talking to Tyler at the time, but I know she was getting a lot of heat for it. Um, so that's heartbreaking. Not, unfortunately, not surprising. So. Oh my God, this is probably unwatchable right now. Pause. I'm going to go see if I can adjust the router. This is just getting embarrassing, honestly, watching it. McKay's going to go fix the Wi Fi. If you can still hear me. Oh, good. Hiram does have a video about that. I'll have to watch it. McKay is going to go fix our Wi-Fi. So I'm going to pause. Pie and beer day just sounds like any day in Australia. (laughs) For a lot of places, I feel like it is. But in Utah, you've got to deal with the trauma of Pioneer Day. Yes, scrupulosity is what I had when I left the church. Well, I, why I was in the church. Now that I left the church, it is still there. I am 
I have OCD. I'm trying new medications for OCD, which is fun. Um, in my opinion, OCD never goes away. That's in my humble opinion. I don't feel like there's a cure for OCD. That is my personal, not professional opinion. Is mercury <clears throat> in fucking Gatorade or what? It, like, in my opinion, OCD can be managed. Like, symptoms can be managed to a point that it doesn't bother you. But in my opinion, it'll always, like, it'll always be there. You just manage it or not. But again, that's my personal, not professional opinion. Okay. Okay. So. We'll see if that change did anything. I, like, pulled the. My son knocked the, the router over the other day, and I just never moved it. <laughs> Maybe that's where our issues are. Oh, hey, from. the psychiatric nurse agrees with me. Hey, that's a good endorsement. Again, we love that's it. not my professional opinion in any way, shape, or form because I'm not going to make that distinction for anybody. If you think you have OCD, get in touch with a psychiatrist and they will help you. Psychiatrists, psychologists, if you will, some of them do that. <clears throat> All right, it's looking more stable now. I haven't seen it drop. We got all four little Wi-Fi Sorry, everybody. thingies working. I'm more looking at the OBS little. Oh. Mercury guy. is not in Gatorade either. It's not? Nope. Well, that's fucked because honestly, with all the issues we've been having this week, it just. Just got a new job and moved to SLC. What's Bless up, Clover? You. Good luck. SLC is like not so bad. No, it's really not. Agree. Manage it. You can get treatment and therapy, but it's more of a chronic condition type situation to the best of my understanding, like depression, anxiety. There Agree. You there you go. Shall we move on? Yes. But anywho, I totally relate, and I'm glad that Jeanette is talking about this. I don't know if she mentioned this in her book, but religious scrupulosity is like way intense. Like, I had the same thing where I would spend hours a night praying because I was afraid if I missed something, like if I didn't pray that McKay was going to get home safely from work, that he wasn't going to, and then he was going to die, and it would be my fault. So religious, you know, scrupulosity and shit is, is no joke. Sucks. All right. On to the next one. Let's <coughs> see it, everyone. This one we're going to talk about Morgy. Okay. I feel like Morgan has been pregnant for like 10 years. 10 years. So what is with the centering on this little video here? Morgan of Paul and Morgan is pregnant. She has a high risk uh, condition that can happen during pregnancy called placenta previa, um, which generally means that you're pregnancy is high risk um lots of people with placenta previa get um induced early or end up having to go in for emergency c-sections um so her condition she's considered high risk so she probably has to go in and do like frequent ultrasounds to make sure that things are going okay so overall she has a high risk pregnancy so she's done some things this pregnancy, like that just, and I don't like to mom shame, okay? We're not one to mom shame. Everybody parents differently. But the thing that concerns me about this is when people do things that are like legitimately harmful, um, like to themselves or someone else while being ignorant about like said situation. So we'll watch this and then we'll talk more about it. <coughs> Let's get some sound in here. One midwife wanted to charge, like, it was going to be somewhere between $6,000 and $9,000, which is kind of outrageous. Um, I will say she was certified, she was actually like a nurse practitioner, had like all these certifications and medical degrees and whatnot. So she's able to provide maybe more than other midwives can provide i don't know so i would say if you're like higher risk for certain things maybe like someone like her you would want to use but i have no risk of any any sort and so i didn't feel like i needed that the midwife that i ended up going with um she charges 3600 
in that. In the first one, I, I liked her, um, but I felt like... 3600 for a midwife? That's someone who's coming to your home to deliver a baby, right? Correct. I don't think we even paid... I mean, we only paid like half of that for a doula. And she was... Well, didn't even matter because it was COVID and she wasn't allowed to do anything anyway, so... Sound off in but, the comments because I... You, you many of you watched my birth story cheap. so <laughs> i did not have a midwife yeah um so i don't know what regular cost is but utah also is like just generally cheaper like on the whole so her area could very likely like if it's higher cost of living there's a good chance that it's more expensive she has said that she wants to do a home birth yes so that is why she is consulting a midwife how much more time is on this? Oh, they're uh, still like, left. Yeah, there's like 30 seconds. Yes, this is exactly why we need Mer Medicare for all. But I feel like uh, maybe they don't qualify for Medicare. They might not. They might not. And Paul seems like the kind of guy who would reject Medicare. Probably. Just on principle. Just, yeah. She kind of made me feel stupid. Sorry if it's kind <laughs> like, of quiet. Been praying, as you guys know, that my placenta would move out of the way. I asked my midwife what she would feel comfortable still doing a home birth, like how far away, how many centimeters away my placenta needs to be for her to feel comfortable. And she said she'd feel good at two centimeters. She'd feel great at three centimeters. Hmm. So... I don't know when the first video was from, but she was like, I don't have any high risk things, which is not true. So I don't know if she's just like trying to push the previous thing aside, saying that it's not like something mm, to be yeah. high risk about, but it is super high risk. I almost had this mind moved out of the way, but it's like a whole different set of guidelines and things with pregnancy. If you have this type of high risk thing going on. So she does need to be like near an emergency room and pregnancies like with and labor with placenta previa can turn really dangerous really fast and so even if you're in like an emergency room like i've had a friend or two who have had similar situations where it was like being you're bleeding out on the table and they've got seconds to get baby out and seconds to get mom's hemorrhaging under control and so a midwife isn't necessarily going to be able to deal with yeah. that in a home. So it's already kind of dangerous in that sense to be high risk in doing a home birth. Now, I'm not here to judge people on doing a home birth. If you want to do that, go for it. Not my thing, but if you if that's your thing, then then go for it. But this is just kind of dangerous thinking because what concerns me is she's like, I don't want to go to the first midwife. Like, I don't like the first midwife because she has all these qualifications and she has all these certifications and she makes me feel stupid. And I'm like, <coughs> uh, that I would hope is the case because you don't know anything when you've had your first kid. Well, and it makes me wonder if she really was like making her feel stupid or if yeah. she was like really trying to convey to well, her the seriousness yeah. of the situation. There's like being knowledgeable and then there's being condescending. So I yeah. mean, I would hope that a midnight wife would not be doing that. Which I mean, she could That's be just both. Big business practice. Yeah. But I don't know. Morgie is a little sensitive sometimes. So. And that's the thing that gives like that concerns me um, with this because it, especially in like in these circles, like in fundy circles, there's so much like intensity around home births. And like, if you don't do a home birth, then like you're a shittier fundy compared to the others yeah. because you didn't do a home or birth. Or God forbid, you, it's a C-section. Yeah. Right? And you know, it's like the fucking crunchy moms, the, the granolas that always seem to be in fundy circles that are like, I didn't have an epidural. I pull out, they're out of my vagina with my own two hands. And it has to be like this competition of like who's crunchy enough I to know, do that, right? which is just ridiculous. Dudes have dick measuring and fundies have that. 
So I'm already concerned about that. I mean, if she didn't have the high risk thing, then I'd be like, you know what? It is what it you is. Know what? Go for it. I hope she's close to a hospital nonetheless. Um, Cause it, no matter what your situation, whether you're high risk or not, things can always go wrong. So, you know, if she does end up needing a C-section again, the midwife isn't going to be able to do that. And she's going to have to go to a hospital. Um, and again, we just come back to the insurance situation. I don't know. There was some speculation in the Fundy Snark Uncensored sub, kind of what you touched on, that maybe insurance is a factor. Um, and so they're wanting neither to of them do the have, home birth because of yeah, the insurance issue. Which, yeah, is fucking wild that we live in a, a day and age where you have to choose whether you're going to pay out of pocket at a hospital and they're going to charge you for things that you didn't need or whatever because you never know and they say they will tell you that what things cost and everything like that but in a high pressure situation like that there's no time to make an informed decision based on cost or you pay out of pocket and you're in the market for someone who hopefully is good enough yeah and you i mean what metric can you go off of every delivery is different so you, they can point to anecdotal, oh, this is how I handled this. So it would be really hard to know. So hopefully insurance isn't an issue and this is 100% something that they're choosing to do because that's what they want. Our resident. I want everybody to be able to choose what they want to do with their body. For real. And our resident psychiatric nurse said, if I had a nickel for every time we've all held our breath when a maternity code is called, it's terrifying. I sincerely hope whatever choice she makes is safe for her and her baby first and foremost. For real. And that's the thing with these situations, especially in fundy circles, like there's so much pressure yeah. on this that it might even be like unconscious for her to want to like do this. Like, do I really want to do this or is this what's been pushed on me for so long that this is what I feel like I have to do? And maybe if I didn't have that conditioning, I would have gone another route. Yeah. Like that's what is that's what saddens me the most is because what conditioning has she had in these fundy circles and in religion and with family members that have pushed her this direction, maybe she wouldn't have pushed been pushed in this direction if yeah. religion and fundiness wasn't a factor. Who knows? Yeah, and they don't, as far as I know, neither of them have actual jobs other than YouTube. And Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're both just doing YouTube full time. And if you don't know like the logistics with YouTube, they it's not like a regular job where you're provided benefits or health insurance. Um, they yeah. pay you your money and that's it. And so they yeah. would have to pursue insurance themselves. Yeah, you're marketing your <laughs> audience basically to their advertisers and they give you a cut so it is all dependent on the views that you're getting and everything like that so adsense is really like off the chain when it comes to being a stable income i mean they they've had sponsors which is a little more sure but yeah we've seen recently the blow up with those sponsors and how that goes over so it's a little bit worrying. Somebody said uh, EMS can't help with anything but routine delivery. Depending on where she is and the complications, she could crash in the truck before even hitting the ER. And that's the like scary thing about this is, you know, depending on their what vicinity they're in and how close they are yeah. to the hospital, like this is just taking so many risks that I don't think I would even be close to comfortable with. And that's not to say that there aren't risks giving birth in a regular hospital. Like, I'll be the first to say <laughs> it doesn't guarantee you a good experience. But I would much rather be crashing in a hospital versus crashing at For home real. with a midwife who can't do anything. Besides potentially maybe keep you kind of stable. But in those situations, if you need to, like, be... Like, if you're bleeding out and you need to, like, urgently need to be in an operating room, like, there's no time for us to, like, have the midwife get you in the car and drive you to the hospital. Like, yeah, things can go so wrong with labor well, so fast. The, like, an ambulance isn't going to be there quick. And that's another thing where if you are not able to pay for a delivery, you definitely can't fucking pay for the, the wee woo wagon ride. <laughs> that's for <laughs> Uninsured YouTuber checking in here. Who for real, James. 
Oh, no. Um, the, will you scroll up just a little bit? Somebody was like, give me a shout. Jonathan Tucker, shout out. Love you, too. Um, Jen says Morgan's birth plan is to search for how to give birth at home Reddit. That's what scares me about a lot of fundies is that, <laughs> that, like it. How to give birth at home Yahoo Answers. The education Searched thing. Searched on Google. <laughs> <laughs> just gets thrown out the window and they go like based on like other people's experience and they're just like, everybody does this, so it must be fine. Yeah. And I just, there's a lot of people that I follow and that are in circles right now that just don't give a shit about maintaining safe pregnancies trisha paytas is not a fundy but i see the exact same shit with her like just complete ignorance doesn't want to like doesn't care doesn't care about being high risk which we think she is like none of that shit which is just really unsettling because at the end of the day you're gambling with not only your life but the life of your kid child yes so that's just scary i really hope that she you know if the high risk thing resolves then it's less of a concern yeah in the end, I am glad that they, if they're going to do a home birth, that they're getting a, a midwife. Because can you imagine Paul being the only person there <laughs> in charge of? Oh man, duty. He would be that outside. Would be, he uh... would be vomiting in the driveway. There is no way. <laughs> um, hey Alexa, what do you do when the baby won't come out? <laughs> Wouldn't an ethical midwife tell her to forget home birth if she's high risk? My theory is that's why she didn't like the first midwife that she talked to that was like a nurse practitioner, I assume. That's That's why I think she didn't like her. That's my assumption. Um, Again, that's total speculation on my part. He just conjecture. Lama's glass dropout. (laughs) I never did Lama's classes. But on the note of it being expensive, my C-section with no epidural. Was forty thousand dollars with the epidural, but not not that it not worked. It didn't work. <laughs> I still got charged for I was it, even say, though it we didn't got work. we paid for it, but it didn't work. Yeah, forty thousand dollars, and I was double Cha-ching. insured, which meant we didn't have to pay a dime. Fortunately, yeah. but if I wasn't double insured, we probably would have paid a huge Easily. chunk of change. Easily. So, <laughs> love that our our kid rides around in a car that's almost like twice. Uh, he his birth was almost like twice as expensive as our as our car, friend, our car. <laughs> that we bought brand new. <laughs> Loved that for me. <clears throat> All right, what do we got next on the document? So the pull up that meme because I think it's funny. Uh, funny Morgan meme. Always love that. This Here is from go. Funny Snark, of course. Funny Snark uncensored. The OGs. We're screen recording over here. Can I enlarge this? Oh, whoa, too big. Paul, when a pregnant Morgan asks for a large fry from Chick-fil-A, are you a special agent sent here to ruin my evening and possibly my entire <laughs> life? Dude, that's also the thing that came across my mind. Like, if, <laughs> if Paul was doing it all on himself, I would be afraid that he would be like, okay, you're just overreacting, and it's not that bad, and then she just, like, bleeds out because she's got something going on it's just frightening so it's frightening but this is this is very on par admit that you need help you know it's okay to admit that you don't know anything like you go into parenthood not knowing shit like we can read and research and do all the things and we still don't know what the fuck is going on because that's just the nature of having a kid i didn't read anything about like babies and stuff like Mm -hmm. that beforehand other than like the medical things that we needed to know for we kept it jordan safe and keeping our kids safe and honestly i'm glad that i didn't it's much better to figure it out myself than it was to have somebody else tell me how they do it and then try to like fit that into what i'm it can be information overload so i don't blame people for like just focusing on the necessities yeah let's do this one oh allison fern you have the transformed wife on there? I did, but I don't think we're going to have time to get to it. Okay. Let's talk about this first. While it's loading, because apparently it's going to take forever. Um, What was I going to say? Who knows? It's loaded, though, so it's all good. So this is through the Wayback Machine. 
This was posted also in Fundy Snark today because Girl Defined decided to release a new PDF about sexual temptation. Oh, good. Um, they rebranded. This is the old one. But this was like <laughs> hella disturbing to me. Are you playing footsie with sexual temptation? Is this really what their website was looking like? This is like this is terrible, frightening. And this decrepit. stock image, like, what did they search for? This sexual temptated. Girl? Is she getting ready to to be taken roughly in the barn or something? That's kind of the vibes that I'm thinking, <laughs> getting. New PDF dropped. New PDF. Yeah. So let's... So, sorry, Brittany. I know you couldn't read it. Let's... <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Oh, my God. Okay. So this is interesting to me. We're, we're reading a smut novel for like five seconds. His heart beat faster as he purposely walked down the dark street. I'm going to a bit street. more dramatics while reading. Do you want to read it? Sure. Okay. Go for All it. All right. We'll go from... We'll start from zero. Right. His heart beat faster as he purposefully walked down the dark street. It was nighttime and nobody else was out. He knew she lived in this area. He was hoping she would come out to meet him. He glanced around to make sure no one saw him. He continued walking when she suddenly appeared out in front of him. Without saying a word, she wrapped her arms around his neck and brazenly kissed him. My husband is gone, she said in a seductive whisper come with me and let's f have our fill of love until the morning <laughs> this is so bad this is so i wish bad. i wish i had some music up to uh queued up to listen to at the same time but unfortunately i don't have that they did write yet. this they really wrote that like an ox being was, led to the I was slaughter that it was uh uh, that one writer from for uh, LDS Living for a second there. There weren't enough errors. Purposefully, yeah, literally, or Purposefully. in this season of life. Um, so he followed the seductress. We're just going to, you know, call women down, like knock them down a few pegs if they're, you know, inherently being sexual at all. Who are this man and women? What? Who are this man and woman? They're the infamous seductress and foolish man found in Proverbs 7. I'm pretty sure that's not how they wrote it. This is like smut novel of Proverbs, Proverbs 7. 7. Yeah, I feel like there was a lot of reading between the lines there. If that's what you got. There was a lot. The man in Proverbs 7 made several foolish choices, which led him to ultimately committing adultery with a married woman. Uh. And then we're back to all fucking caps with 100 point font. The road he chose to intentionally walk down led him on the path of temptation and in the direction of sexual sin. In the direction? I mean, I would argue he's doing more than directing, but okay. His first bad decision began when he decided to leave his house in the middle of the night. Because we all know the Holy Ghost goes to bed at midnight. Yeah. So don't be leaving your house or you're going to go sleep with somebody's wife. Well, Kristen and Bethany... <laughs> I would like to add, if you recall, Jesus said that a man, when he lusts after a woman, has already sinned in his heart. So that was actually the first bad decision. Or were these just randoms? It sounded like he was. Oh, yeah, he knew he was already less. He had already committed the sin. So I like how he said he knew she lived in this area. So did he just like wander around the neighborhood until he and just knock on some doors until you found the one. <laughs> Starts with knocking on doors and it ends with knocking boots. Oh my God. So who is known for being out and about in the middle of the night? Prostitutes. Oh my God. Wow. This is really reading in between the lines. What? Who's known for being out and about in the middle of the night? People who work the night shift. Police. EMS. Teenagers. McDonald's. McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> like, what if you're... So, I've got news for you guys. If you're out in the middle of the night, you're a prostitute. Sorry, I didn't make the rules. So, there you go. It is what it is. 
But you know? going out at night was his first wrong footsie move. What the fuck is a footsie move? It's this. I know what footsies footsie. are, but a footsie move? Yeah. I've that's... never heard that. You know, they they niched it down in the wrong direction on this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. As a night shift RN, ouch. Me on my way to Taco Bell. Yeah, right? <laughs> yes, healthcare workers, you know. <clears throat> God. My DoorDash driver bringing me a, a Frosty <laughs> at 12.30 because I'm fucking 10 shots deep. I'm a hooker for being at work. So this is great. Okay. So a second, he made a choice to walk down the exact street where the prostitute lived. So this is, this is where we get a little Mormon because he can't control himself. So he it's saw, the prostitute, quote unquote, yeah. it's her job to make sure that he can keep himself in line. Yeah. She shouldn't have been wearing that ankle length dress. She shouldn't have been in her house. She shouldn't. Yeah. She shouldn't have been there. No, she should have been elsewhere. Her she house is too close to where he was walking. <laughs> Rip my night janitor the harlot. <laughs> oh my God. I can't. Okay. So... Uh, he, we don't know if he was going directly to her house or simply hoping he would bump into her. In the middle of the night, what the fuck is she doing? Mowing the lawn? Uh. <laughs> what? Is that a euphemism? Stop. Trimming the hedges. Stop. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. So let's just say he's not going to bump into her in the middle of the night unless she's like, <laughs> I don't know what she would be doing. But either way, he made the foolish choice of walking anywhere near her house. So if he goes anywhere near her house, he's he's running a risk. For so real. That's just, that's the way it goes. So third, instead of running away from her smooth, seductive speech, he stood there and listened to everything she had. If in case you have forgotten, it was a while ago since we started reading this. <laughs> what she said was, "My husband is gone. Come with me and let's have our fill of love until the morning." How long did that take for me to say, Jordan? Three seconds. Three seconds. He was really loitering to hear the, the end of that <laughs> sentence. Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh my God! Is she running a brothel from her house? Why does he know where her house is? Well, that's the part that I'm also confused about. Because he made the choice to walk down the exact street, but he is just going to wander around not knowing where her house is. Like, I'm just, this is so confusing. I'm not tracking. So it gets worse. Go up a little bit. Oh, did we get that last one? Um, the more he listened, the more she made sin sound irresistible. Not going to lie. It does not take a lot of convincing to make sin sound irresistible. It's <laughs> fucking great. <laughs> Literally, all she said was like two things. So apparently it doesn't take much. I know, right? Without hesitation, he followed her to his doom. Doom! Are we serious? All right. Let's hit it up with the doom song. Are we freaking serious? One, again, we're in all caps, 100 point font. One foolish decision at a time. He played footsie with sexual temptation and ultimately gave in to sin. In what year did this sentence happen? I'd like to know because we sound yeah, like the fucking right. 1800s over here. Uh, this says July 21st, 2019 at the top. Oh, God. That's even worse than so. I thought. Okay. So before we point fingers at the foolish man in Proverbs 7... Many of us as Christian girls need to recognize that we often chose a similar path of deception. Sleeping with someone's wife. We think we can walk down the Kristen street. Kristen and Bethany. <laughs> Plot is this twist. a self-report? <laughs> <laughs> we think we can walk down the street of compromise. Is that what they intend it to mean in the sentence? And play footsie with sexual temptation and not get burned. No, that, that's right. Okay. That, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Because so, we're proud. We're full of pride. So we're compromising. So we think we can compromise. 
Okay. Okay. I'm 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 tracking now. We think we can compromise without getting burned. Right. That's what they're saying. So let's talk about some common ways you might be playing footsie with sexual temptation right now. Oh, oh. So get ready, guys. <laughs> We're gonna have strap a strap on. Strap on. <laughs> <laughs> That was intentional. <laughs> um, we're going to have self-report confessional time in the chat. Getting on your phone slash computer late at night when nobody is around and surfing the internet. Oh, my God. This was written in 2019. Who the fuck says surfing the internet? Cowabunga. <laughs> <laughs> is this 2002? What the hell? Okay, so you can't be on your phone or computers I'm, at night, I'm guys. Catch some gnar internet waves, bro. <laughs> okay, guys, listen. You can't be on your phone or computer late at night, especially when nobody's around. If somebody is around, you might be okay. If they're monitoring you to make sure you're not looking at porn, then you're probably fine. Yeah. Uh, not just surfing. You got to read between the lines. Just surfing the internet isn't inherently bad, but you're playing footsie when nobody's around because that could lead to ringing the devil's doorbell <laughs> you know a game of dice with the devil the point i mean know. a good point is but dude went to her house to get laid he didn't play footsie so like yeah. there is no footsie happening here they did a lot more than that okay guys watching a movie containing sexual scenes and immoral <gasps> behavior Ooh, scandalous so no game of thrones no yellowstone no yellowstone <laughs> none of this that zoom in a little bit here why is this bar just rather large it's okay like, oh there we go okay oh i was missing some context okay that looks a still little better bad. still pretty bad what if you're up late and i reading the bible online yeah what if you're playing footsie with yeah. god you then you are covered by the blood of the savior <laughs> you're not you're good sick live yo Where were we Thank you. Reading Rome, uh, starting a chat or texting conversation with the guy who you know is trouble. What does that even mean? That did Taylor Swift write this? Like he knew you looked, were trouble when you walked in. Did he look at you like lustfully? I did all of these this morning. <laughs> this is this is a, a nightly checklist. So they get really specific with this. Reading romance novels because what we were reading before isn't that. Filled with overly sexualized and erotic storyline. That was a pretty sexual storyline. It really was. They're telling you not to read it, but then they write one and force you to read it. Really, it was a, it was a fan fiction based on Proverbs seven. Bible fan fiction. Bible fan fiction. They should they should have talked to Joseph Smith on that one. I work night shifts. I use my phone only at night. <laughs> They don't have a lot. There is no in between, you guys. It's black and white. There is no gray. Okay. What what certain apps? We already addressed the surfing the web on your phone. No physically so. involved. Too physically involved in a romantic relationship. No footsie. So that basically means don't do anything else. Like what can you do? Handhold. Don't do that. That might even be pushing it. Yeah. As soon as those hands turned idle, they're the devil's flashlights. It's true. It's true. Shout out Fundy Fridays. Oh shit, we gotta ban somebody. Hold up. Oh, we got the pornos. We got in here. the. Oh man, we Beetlejuiced them. Oh man, you guys. Oh shit. They're taking over. It's the horny bots. We summoned the horny bots. Hello, bots. Bethy caused a porn Bethany Beal, you did this to us. <laughs> No touching. Let me double check and make sure. Bethany, goddamn. If they are <coughs> hidden from this channel. Cool. That's fucking funny, yo. This was like we summoned them here. It's like we had a demon circle. Nice. Just okay. goes and deletes all of them. We love that. Browsing YouTube randomly or freely watching modern secular videos. So you can't watch YouTube, guys. So get off. Yeah. You get the fuck off YouTube. Don't watch Girl Defined even <laughs> because. I oh, secular music videos. Okay. We're in the clear. Don't watch Morgan's old music videos because that will lead to temptation. That would. Attending certain parties that you know are full of temptations. Like, what parties is Bethany going to? 
Not ones that have tequila, because that's a temptation. Like her family's birthdays? I don't think they're going to have temptation at those parties, besties. Out of their mind in those ones. No. (laughs) Scanning channels on... Now we're going to scanning, not surfing. Scanning channels on TV and watching shows that seem interesting without really knowing anything about them. Uh Uh-oh. What does that mean? It seems interesting. They're talking about Naked and Afraid, probably. Watching shows that seem interesting without really knowing anything about them. If you start watching a show, I mean, do you really know anything about it? So don't watch anything is what we're, we're telling you. Lock yourself in a basement. Get rid of your phone. No computer. No YouTube. No smut novels. You guys are done. No hand-holding. No hand-holding. No apps. Nothing. No games on your phone. No games <laughs> on your phone. <laughs> Visiting certain social media pages that are filled with raunchy and seductive content. For more info, go to uh, CosmoContainsPorn.com. For real. What are social media pages that are filled with raunchy and seductive Cosmo. content? Do we need to go to CosmoContainsPorn.com? We'll, we'll get to the end of this. Okay. And then if I remember, we'll go back. Okay. Um, so I don't know what that means. It's like she's trying to pad out an essay. The thing that I was going to bring up as well, Transformed Wife posted on her Instagram stories like a few days ago saying that she's getting like really like seductive uh, or like inappropriate reels and she was asking how to get rid of them. And McKay's like, the algorithm, it will serve you what you're looking for. Right? Oh, God. I don't know. Maybe we're giving Instagram too much credit. We should do a... on the struggle bus lately maybe i'll do it this is on a totally different topic somebody mentioned tumblr and i'm thinking about it maybe for one of our patron videos i'll pull up my old tumblr oh god no that'll be embarrassing as hell but it would be funny honestly to you guys. yeah i think it's our turn it's our turn to get the to show off our cringe it is it really is okay hanging around people who constantly pressure you to compromise okay i guess Dating a guy who isn't a solid Christian (gasps) and doesn't really care about God that much. What's a solid Christian? I want a flaccid Christian. (laughs) I want a gaseous Christian. (laughs) You know, maybe a liquid. I I would I would compromise for a liquid Christian. (laughs) A liquid Christian. God. Okay. well, this has been really illuminating. Uh Oh, we've got 100 point font again. Listen up, girls. Although some of these things might seem like no big deal, they can become the very thing that will lead you down a road you never intended to go. (laughs) Is the the flax and cord thing is a Bible, a biblical thing too, right? Your guess is as good as mine on that one. So, (laughs) same brain cell. (laughs) Thanks. I've seen solid Christian girls that give into sexual sin by making the initial choice to play footsie with with sexual sexual temptation. temptation. Okay. I've seen Christian girls entrapped in habitual pornographic sin due to the initial choice to play footsie with a seductive website at Pornhub. I've seen great Christian leaders and influencers lose their entire platform. And ministry due to their initial choice to play flirt with sexual temptation. I've seen single Christian girls become completely engrossed in an immoral relationship as a result of their initial choice to flirt with that hot guy. So there are no Christian hot guys, just to clarify. (laughs) Don't flirt with the hot guy. A solid Christian has to be ugly, apparently. (laughs) No hot, solid Christians allowed. Flaccid Christians unhot christians only viscous christians are hot but a solid one i don't like this website yelling at me this for real i feel like like people whose grandma types at you in like all caps like very big dramatic (laughs) sins almost always start with one small compromise like (laughs) that's how i feel when i look at this this reads very fem cell i agree i agree okay ask any of those people if it was worth it and they will tell you no playing foot so you've asked all of them is this like the dentist commercials where they're like nine out of ten dentists recommend this toothpaste nine out of ten fundies have said that this is terrible and don't do it 
playing footsie with sexual temptation is never worth it. I've been there too, and it was never worth it for me either. So who's talking? Is this Bethany or Kristen? They never established that as far as I know. They talked about this in their book. Wasn't it Bethany that had the porn problem? I... One of them did. I think so. One of them did. I don't know which one it was. So I can't encourage you to discern your direction in everything you do. That kind of sounds like what you're doing. Always ask yourself, will this help me move towards purity, holiness, and honor toward God or away from it? Be wise about what you watch. Be wise about what you engage in, about you, who you hang out with, who you text, how you use the internet. Be wise about what you think about. And we finish with a lovely scripture. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. <sighs> or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. This is disgusting. I hate it when they say shit like that. Yeah, okay, that get ready. We're yelling again. Funky. Our world is full of sexual temptation. Our hearts are bent toward lust. Be ready to engage with a battle. Be ready to flee. This was in 2019, but let me tell you, the whole fundy circle thing right now of get ready to fight. The battle is coming. Are you ready? No, this is the war. Same shit like, all the time. Dude. You guys, oh my god. <sighs> okay, so we're tell they're telling you how to pray. God, I confess that I am a sinner in need of your constant grace and strength. I want to honor you with my life and my purity. Blech. So please help me do that. I ask you to reveal ooh, areas in ooh. my life where I'm opening myself up. <gasps> ooh. Now Make we're playing sure footsies with God. Keep your legs closed or the devil might get out or in. <laughs> <laughs> please convict me of where I'm lacking discernment. Morbo. I... <laughs> I unintentionally did Morbo right there. I didn't even realize it. Thank you, Jen. I ask you for your strength to help me overcome sexual temptation today. May my actions, my thoughts, and my motives be pure in your sight. This reminds me of that TikTok song that went viral about that girl who sings about God being a freak while he watches over me while I'm getting like railed on the couch or something. What? I never, I never heard that. Heard that. <laughs> <laughs> it was really popular on TikTok. God's always watching, so make him embarrassed to do so. That is my vibe. Yes, please hit the like button if you haven't already. Is God convicting you in areas of your life where you might be opening yourself up to sexual temptation? I don't know. Maybe this is just me, but when we were super Mormon and religious and I had... Oh, this is written by Kristen. So oh, Kristen's the here. one with the per with the porn problem. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is 2019. 2018. Or 2018. At the top, the, the Wayback Machine was saying... What? This this is on the struggle bus with uh, scrolling right now. Nick just broke himself with comments. I'm sorry, Melissa. Um, I I don't know if this was just me, but I always felt awkward about this stuff because you know I wasn't what? a good Mormon virgin, right? Go back. So I always felt bad, and so I would constantly pray about this stuff and be like, Oh my God, do you really forgive me for? doing it with a dude like it just was always so awkward to talk about with like i i don't want to have a conversation with god about this i know right but it just feels so weird just imagine are you good dude i am not good what is going on right <laughs> now i mean just having imagining having that conversation with a parent is just so sorry sorry dad that i was a dirty filthy slut <laughs> walk in the streets at night <laughs> oh my god okay so oh god james sent it to me james See? is so fast i'm gonna listen to this later okay so basically you guys are all sinners and they're surprisingly they didn't really like concretely touch on like touching yourself which is kind of surprising I mean, ringing the devil's doorbell <laughs> they didn't like outright say it which i'm kind of surprised by because there is no self-care in fundy circles yeah that's really weird there is only all caps lock smut porn like an ox being led <laughs> to the slaughter <laughs> he immediately followed the seductress inside puny human what are you doing <laughs> 
That's oh for you. Oh my god. <laughs> I can't. I can't with this shit. <laughs> I cannot. No poder. <laughs> okay, go back to our doc. I Dang, think there was look at one this. more thing. Look at this going crazy over here. Wow, you guys make us feel so popular. I know. Dang, it makes it look like we're doing crazier stuff than we are. Yeah. There, oh, we, go. there we go. Now it's caught up. <laughs> it's all about finger strength, baby. What was the seductress doing inside? Good question. Let's stop blaming the seductress because he was the one who went to seek her out. Slayer deep cut. Men can't be held accountable for their actions. It's only women that can be held accountable for men's actions. Mormonism is the same way. Yeah. You can't seriously. wear the shirt that I'm wearing right now because Dallin H. Hoax will tell you that you've become pornography and he will say know, it right? in the grossest way possible. It still rings because, in yeah. my brain every time I wear a tank top. Because a man can't have impure thoughts if you're fully clothed. Pull up the video. Have you where ever he says met? It. Oh man, have you ever met a teenage boy? They are just horny. I am speaking from experience as a Don't former do teenage a boy. on your noki. <laughs> 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 oh my god. <laughs> I did. Somebody is asking about what Ruby said about eating disorders. I did. We will maybe talk about that next week during our live stream because I'll have to put some major trigger warnings up because it is highly yeah. inappropriate. I think I, ha I have uh, included this video before in one of our... But now you guys get to witness it in real time. Yeah. I think I cut it up a little bit. Do all that you can to avoid pornography. Don't accommodate any degree of temptation. Prevent sin and avoid having to deal with its in inevitable destruction. So turn it off. Look away. Avoid it at all costs. Direct your thoughts in wholesome paths. Do not patronize pornography. Do not use your purchasing power to support moral degradation. And young women, please understand that if you dress immodestly, you are magnifying this problem by becoming pornography to some of the men who see you. So that's what plays in my head every you time I wear a tank top. Mostly to avoid pornography. Shut up. Mostly that end bit. Um, primarily that end bit. Because, I mean, like, obviously you don't want to patronize any sort of studios or productions where people are being, <laughs> like, actually abused. But this dude is more on the premise of spiritual and godly morality, not people physically being abused. What were you laughing at? That man's head is a literal egg. <laughs> yeah, and get this. This was from how long ago? 2015. 2015. It's, it's been uh, seven years since then. That's when I started going to church again for reference. So yeah. this is burned into my brain. This was right after I met the man myself while I was in uh, Honduras. No, wait. Right. No, this was just before. Sorry, 2015. Voldemort or Jeffree Star in 30 years. Oof. Sorry, Jeffrey. <laughs> um, yeah, this dude is literally insane. Um, he is also a, like a, a fan favorite of the church. Um, he is, is he first or second counselor? He is first counselor. He is directly under the prophet. So yeah. he has Luckily, a lot of power. No, I think he's the next one in line too. To be which prophet. Which fucking sucks. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Yeah. So once Rusty Nelson, which he is up there in age. He's 98, man. I think he's now. He's old as shit. Mormon prophet's 90 fucking eight years old. Yeah. When he kicks it kicks it then the egghead will get there will be president. yes i did meet the egghead himself uh when i was on my mission in honduras he came to visit and uh the most memorable thing i remember uh, the most memorable thing he said while i was there and i sang in a little choir for him i suck at singing but <laughs> for whatever reason my mission president thought i was i musically inclined but yeah, I met him, sang in a little choir for him. And the most memorable thing that he said was he referred to his iPad as an infernal contraption when he couldn't get it unlocked. 
<laughs> which is pretty epic if you ask me. <laughs> oh, my oh, oh my god. Did I ever want to be prophet? No. No. Uh, based off of my Mormon fortune telling, I assumed that it would mean that I would be a mission president or something like that. But happy birthday, Kara. I fucked that up. Kara, happy birthday. I just, yeah, this dude is toxic. He is in line to be prophet because he was a lawyer and then a judge. I'm pretty sure. He was a and Utah then he Supreme was Court justice. On the Supreme Court in Utah. So it doesn't get more, uh, like, cover your ass. Yeah. Oh, shit, bro. Liz Cheney got defeated by Trump-backed challenger in Wyoming. I was Thank kind you. of afraid that would happen. She was going hard. I remember we were just recently driving through Wyoming, and Jordan was getting uh, targeted ads I was. from Liz on I've got a lot of, I'm not a, I got a lot of respect for Liz with how she's run the January 6th committee. <clears throat> anyway, back to what I was saying. So Egghead sucks. Yeah. Um, he was the president of BYU while they were doing conversion therapy, electroshock conversion therapy on the campus. And last year when he was asked about it, he lied saying that that didn't go on while he was at the university. So big james i know you would i knew you would feel my pain on that one i am so disappointed i did not want to look at polls tonight just because i didn't want to know but it seems like they called it really early so it must be must be rather bad it must be rather bad which i'm 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 not surprised not surprised oh we got this <clears throat> catching up sorry everyone okay what else is on my list um, I think the last thing that's on here is B Dong. Hell fucking yes. Will you pull up the link as well? Will you go to her subreddit? Because somebody made some nice comments in what? there. Oh, B Dong. Yeah. So i spent forty thousand dollars on a degree and all i got with this was this stupid trauma that's how i feel right the fuck now except it's not forty thousand dollars it'll be like 32 at the end but <clears throat> what are we looking for in here not that one you're gonna have to go back oh uh, it brought me to a oh it did okay now you can scroll no it brought me to a specific post it's the second one pinned, I'm pretty sure. The second pinned one? Yes. About Ongoing that civil case? Yes. I'm so sick of this tan woman. Honestly. She's the worst. She man. might as well, like, the, oh, God. Okay, scroll down a little bit. So, essentially, we have information coming out about B-Dong. Will you pull up the lawsuit itself really quick? Yup. So today, this information came out um, and was posted publicly. I don't know who found it. Somebody in Brittany Dawn snark, um, I'm sure. But this is uh, the state of Texas versus Brittany Dawn Davis and Brittany Dawn Fisnick Fitness. Fisnicks? fitness pizza in my mouth <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't remember Brittany essentially sold a bunch of fraudulent shit to a bunch of people she told them that she would make custom fitness plans for them which she did not and she stole a bunch of pdfs and did not make them custom and then charged shipping on a digital document those are just like today that were emailed that were emailed to people because you charge for shipping when it's delivered electronically <clears throat> b-dong's horse boarded at the same place my horse was at for real is that the one that she like abandoned and they had to take care of it thank you for this i'm counting this video as research so i am not a lawyer and mckay is not a lawyer we no. are reading this as two uneducated people who have no idea what the fuck is going on and I even less than Jordan. So <laughs> mental health is my area. This is not my area. So there are some things that I read in here that are very obvious. 
And then there are a lot of comments, thanks to Brittany Donsnark, that will give us some additional information. So in the very beginning of this, it is called, keep going. It is called the plaintiff's motion to compel respondents to plaintiff's first set of interrogatories and requests for production. So essentially what I have gathered from this is the state of Texas is suing Brittany, right? And so they essentially sent them, go up a little bit. Oops, sorry. Um, they sent Brittany, uh, the defendant, a set of discovery requests after providing evasive and inadequate answers to interrogatories and inadequate responses to requests for production. So my understanding is they requested information. Ah, we have a porn bot again. Oh my God, God the porn bots. God damn it, Bethany. We do have a mod, but I don't know if they're still in here or not. Yeah, I can get to it pretty quick. Um, so here's my understanding, okay? Porn bots, this is not the time. We're not talking about Bethany anymore. We're talking, well, I guess Brittany is still, Brittany's all <clears throat> fucked up about porn and shit too. So maybe, <laughs> maybe it is appropriate. So my understanding is they sent requests to Brittany and her lawyer and said, we need this information from you, which is information pertaining to the lawsuit. So now scroll down a little bit. So the whole premise is that Brittany engaged in false, misleading, or deceptive acts and practices in the conduct of trade and commerce as defined by Texas law. Okay. So no worries, Sage. There's like a million of them. Um... Beginning in 2014, defendant Brittany profited from the sale of online fitness packages to thousands of consumers. This is thousands, you guys, of consumers with the promise of personalized nutritional guidance and individualized fitness coaching. Brittany's online fitness packages offered macro nutritional assessments and depending on the plan purchased, daily or weekly email training and one-on-one -on -one coaching. The packages ranged from $92 for a one-time macro consultation to $300 for three months of personalized macros, trainings, and coaching. However, the online nutrition and fitness plans delivered to consumers were not individualized and defendants failed to provide the promised coaching and check-ins. So then they complained on social media. She made an apology on YouTube and then they took the website down. Okay. So here's what happened. So they go for discovery, right? Which means they're getting documents and things pertaining to the case, right? Again, not a lawyer. So trial is said to be March 6, 2023, which is the day before my birthday. So this will be a lovely birthday present to me. Hell yeah. Um, so defendant's attorneys, so Brittany's attorneys requested, well, first, no, plaintiff, state of Texas, served its first set of interrogatories and requests for production on defendants. So they requested information from Brittany. Brittany's attorney requested and plaintiff agreed to four extensions of time to respond to initial written rec discovery for a total of 48 days extensions. So they, Brittany's lawyer got her four extensions of time for discovery. Okay. This is literally so stupid. Like, are you already seeing a problem here? Yeah. This is not like small claims court shit. This is the stupid state of texas the prosecutor is, is suing the you. texas attorney general like yeah. girly come on so the agreement between them was that everything like all the discovery stuff the responses the things that the state of texas had asked for was due on friday june 24th they did not respond on june 27th which is notably days after the date they agreed on Defendants served evasive and inadequate responses to plaintiffs' first interrogatories and requests for production. So then days later, Texas sent a meet and confer email to Brittany's attorney identifying the deficiencies in the discovery responses. And then state of Texas requested an amended responses without objection and a complete production of documents from defendants by July 11th or plaintiff would seek court intervention. Okay. So essentially, they've gone past all the extensions that they can have. Like, they're they're out of time. And so basically, if they don't get their shit together, then the court is going to have to intervene and basically force them or compel them to do what they say, right? 
So I just want to shout out Sage. You're doing great. I'm yeah, just thank fast. you, Sage. I'm fast as fuck. Well. <laughs> so no worries. Brittany's attorney requested an additional two weeks to address the discovery issues. Okay, keep going. On the same day, Brittany's attorney followed his email with a call to communicate his client's acquiescence and willingness to provide complete and objection-free responses. Plaintiff's attorney agreed to extend to July 25th. Oh my God. Brittany didn't respond on July 25th. The following day, the state of Texas informed Brittany that he will be filing a motion to compel answers to interrogatories that were not properly answered and to compel responses to requests for production and were improperly withheld. So that's what this document is. So within eight minutes, Brittany's attorney advised they would be producing what is likely much more than 10,000 pages of documents in their possession and that they would produce all documents by the end of the week. There's no way, right? 10,000 pages? 10,000 pages. Oh what my God. Fuck? This does not look good for you. This does not look good for you at all. On July 27th, the next day, defendants served defendants first amended answers to interrogatories and first amended responses to requests for production which is their response to that, which were still evasive and incomplete. State of Texas has repeatedly attempted to resolve this dispute with defendants. To date, plaintiff's attempts have been unsuccessful and thus the court's intervention is now necessary. How incompetent can you be? Do you realize that this does not look good for you? Uh-oh. Like, hello? Jordan, Gurley was busy... Making TikToks. Go, making TikToks and hiring <laughs> videographers and photographers for random video and photo shoots with her <laughs> greasy husband. Greasy husband. James, it's one page with relevant info and 9,999 <laughs> cover pages. They just like <laughs> got <laughs> some random like document generator to flood them and hopefully she's not going to get in trouble. Oh my God. I haven't seen someone this legally in the wrong since Lawson Bates. For real. Okay, so keep going. So I think this just states why and how they got this document. Go to the next one. Um, so requests seeking information, identifying the consumers who bought her stuff, the payments, the communications between Brittany and her customers. Um, the personal recommendation for each consumer who paid for the service and how those macronutrient recommendations were set or adjusted for each consumer. So they're going ham into this shit. Like, not only do they want to know who, they want to know who paid and how much, any contact between Brittany and these people, and then how she came up with the recommendations. Yeah. For the, for the information that she provided. And she is so freaking stupid that she's not going to be able to come up with, like, recommendations that are substantiated in anything but her own idiocy. I'm sorry. Okay, keep going. Oh, yes. So this is the point that I was talking about earlier. So they, discovery requests, seek information about the number of consumers who were charged a shipping fee for materials delivered exclusively by email and amount of money received. So Owie. literally she charged shipping on these things. I would call that a uh, fraud. So here's where the money part comes in. So the information is proportional to the needs of the case because the state of Texas intends to seek a civil penalty to be paid to the state in an amount of not more than $10,000 per violation and to restore money to consumers, which was acquired by means of an unlawful act or practice. So my what's, understanding... What's DTPA? I don't know. I assume it's Texas law around like consumers. I want to know, so DPTA. DPT okay. vaccine. Okay, never mind. <laughs> that was a mistake. Somebody will look it up. So um, Let us know. it might be law based on like consumer yeah. providing and violations and stuff. So my understanding is that there are multiple, because um, it says 10,000 per violation. My understanding is there's multiple violations 
Um, so up to $10,000 for each violation is what it sounds like to me. Again, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not Emily Baker. Like, I'm sure she'll do a video on this. So defendants, again, have Dollar failed to respond. Attorney. Dollar store attorney. Dollar tree literally. attorney. Like these, it sounds like her attorney is like upwards of Amber Heard's attorney. Because that was, that was a shit show too. So they failed to respond and each interrogatory must be answered fully based on all information reasonably available. The court will treat an evasive or incomplete answer as a failure to answer. So basically, now the court is involved. Deceptive Trade Practices Act. Okay, there you go. Down to party Thank all you. night. <laughs> down to party all right. So keep going down. So this talks about how I read this part. It's basically outlining how she can't be evasive in responding and they have to provide all the information that they have. Keep going. Um, so now they're saying this is what they provided. So they're saying that what Brittany responded with, which seeks the characteristic benefits of qualities offered in price for each plan available for sale on Be Don Fit. So professional. Be Don Fit. As well as the total number of consumers who purchased each plan, defendants state their incomplete answer will be supplemented with additional information. So whatever they apply, like whatever they did the first time, bullshit. Sorry. Exhibit B, again, inadequate. It asks defendants to identify each consumer who purchased a plan, which one, date, all that stuff. In their response, they reference responses to different things, but those productions are also grossly incomplete. Defendant's incomplete answer also states that this will be this answer will be supplemented with a list of names and dates. Honestly, I don't understand how they can be doing this. So again, another thing they didn't do, they state this will be answered with a supplemented list of names. Again, another thing they want check-in emails, text messages. Uh, they identified three individual consumers who complained that they did not receive their coaching, in quotations. This response is evasive because it does not answer the question asked. <laughs> I don't think they can get any clearer than that. Why are they saying, hey, these people complain that they didn't receive their coaching. Yes, you were the one who was supposed to fulfill that. Why, Why are you, what Why part are you, are you not understanding? This is not a proper answer. Defendants are in the best position to identify the consumers who did or did not receive check-in emails or texts during their purchase plans. Literally. They're the ones that have to provide that. So again, this one is the one that killed me. So they were asked to identify the consumers who were charged a shipping fee for a delivery of digital products, right? And the total amount in dollars and cents received. Brittany says they do not know of any shipping costs which were received, but well, also answers that. Hopefully nobody was sent a receipt. <laughs> Honestly, I just... They could probably just ask those three people that they identified. <laughs> oh my as God. Not having uh, received their coaching. So they go on to say that imagine? the rest. No, I can't. This Can is like grossly incompetent. Yeah, this is a dollar store diploma for law, practicing law. <laughs> Unless they're doing this intentionally, which also could be the case. Which also. If it's intentional, it seems worse, honestly. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, could you? I feel like you it really would be. I think this is a strategy. But again, I'm not a lawyer. Maybe there is something to that. There's a strategy. Um, again, things they provided incomplete, failure to answer. Defendants also twice <clears throat> failed to verify the answers under oath. It could impair the state of Texas's ability to use the answers against the defendants at trial, which is a huge problem. Defendants waived their objections to plaintiff's discovery requests when they failed to timely serve their responses. So now they can't even object. Like, they're they're done. Plaintiff is unable to adequately prepare its case for trial if it cannot be reasonably assured to have discovered all responsive documents in defendant's possession, custody, and control. So, I mean, that's what it comes down to at this point. Like, they can't go to trial without this information. Like, this is the way that trials so work and what's default, established. Then? I think they have to, like, force her to do it. So she's just, like, pushing it off. Yeah. I imagine that there's some way they can force her to do it. I mean, she can't just be like, nope, I'm going to do it. 
Could they like hold her in contempt or something? That's like that? what I assume. Again, I'm not Emily Baker. She would tell you. We don't know what the hell is going on. But there's just a lot of here that reads very obviously that it's ridiculous. I feel like Brittany thought she could just charge fat people to be their emotionally distant skinny friend and they would all thank her for the pleasure. <laughs> you know, that's the vibes hey, that it's giving. That's the vibes, okay? That uh, It really is. Okay, so let's see if it says anything else about what happens next. So Brittany's failure to respond in good faith to the discovery request warrants the granting of this motion. Therefore, the court should compel defendants to fully respond to this thing that they did that came out that I saw today. So this is prayer. What the fuck is that doing there? Why does it say prayer? Am I Let hallucinating? <laughs> Let us pray. <laughs> okay. Wait, go up a little bit. Despite repeated attempts. Stop. Despite repeated attempts to resolve these issues between parties, defendants continue to fail to respond. Therefore, plaintiff asked the court to set this motion for hearing. And after the hearing, order defendants to fully respond to the interrogatories and produce all requested documents within 10 days, 10 days of the date of the order. Plaintiff also requests such further relief to which it may be entitled. So my understanding is now they have no choice. That's my understanding. I would hope so. You know what I mean? What else do we need to... I don't think any of this... Keep going down. I don't think any of this is important. I think this is just all reiterating what we just the answers talked to the about. Stuff and then... So wait, go up a little bit. So uh, this I thought was interesting. Defendant objects in that request. The request is overly broad and not reasonably tailored to include only matters relevant to the case because the request is for all documents identifying consumer payments. This request would require defendant to produce documents concerning incidents, claims, and persons having nothing to do with the occurrence made the subject matter of the pending litigation. Defendants refuses to produce any documents about offense or curses other than the one made the basis of plaintiff's claim in this litigation. So this is PayPal um, that they're talking about. Go down. I think she said something about how she doesn't have access to her PayPal or something anymore. Keep going. It might not have been in there. Can we just get the spark notes? Wait, go up. We're going to be. Uh... So basically, from what I can gather, their whole argument for like most of these um, is that it's too broad. They, you know, what they're requesting doesn't have anything to do with the case. So they don't want to provide it. That's basically what I can gather. OK, go back to the Reddit link. Again, that is my very simple response. So, page 25, I thought this was interesting. Go to page 25. She just quoted it right there. Oh, she did? Yeah. Okay. Finally, this is from Brittany's own lawyer. Okay, you guys. Our own, her own lawyer. Finally, our client struggled to even save the delivered documents as PDF documents. We are discussing hiring a company to gather these documents for our client. It will certainly be a challenge for her to deliver actual documents. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> oh, Are you God. fucking serious? Dude, imagine... Ugh. Imagine your lawyer saying, hey, I gotta say this, and you're gonna look like a complete and utter fucking idiot. But <laughs> I gotta say this if you want to get out of this, possibly. <laughs> and it, it's, like, it's totally bullshit because the documents that she was creating for these said clients were word documents that were supposedly saved as pdfs so this is literally <clears throat> such shit like i swear to god she knows nothing she doesn't know how to do anything but lie go back to that other one that you just collapsed yeah there was something in there um yeah so this is what i saw earlier this person pointed out like i said that this document is only public because she repeatedly refused to comply so blatantly that they finally had to request the court step in and have a judge legally compel her 
to do what she's already legally required to do. So, um, and somebody compared it to Alex Jones. I predict if they issue a default uh, libel, I think is what they meant to say, verdict, then she'll say this was a witch hunt and she never got a fair trial. So again, LOL. We're not lawyers, but it seems there might be a method to her lawyer's madness. Because, I, I mean, maybe he is that incompetent. I don't know. I mean, when it boils down to it, he's going to be paying millions of dollars out to the people that he was libeling. Is that, a, is that a verb? Libel? I don't know. She thick, but she ick. All but, no brains. BD is the only person ever to go to court for a misdemeanor and talk herself onto death row. Honestly, <laughs> I feel like this just doesn't, I, again, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a judge. I don't have any legal background, but to me, this just reads like you're making this 10 times more difficult. And like, if I was a prosecutor, I mean, all of this is going to be discussed at trial. So it's like, why did you take 15 years to respond to requests? And even then you wouldn't respond to requests and the fucking judge had to force you to do it. You know? Nice nugget. AG, identify the total amount in dollars and cents you receive from consumers as a shipping fee for materials delivered exclusively by mail. I do not know of shipping costs which were received. Of course she doesn't. That's exactly why people were, uh, were complaining about you charging shipping for a digital document. Best quote, she is objected to providing evidence that's explicitly relevant to the subject matter of the lawsuit against the weight of considerable consumer complaint evidence. Oof. Then more, Brittany is royally fucking up commentary from the state representation. And this motherfucker closes with a thank you and have a great 4th of July weekend. <laughs> that's he has had, he is tired of this shit, man. The requested information is necessary because the state of Texas seeks to permanently enjoin defendants from engaging in false, misleading, and or deceptive acts and practices. So I don't know what that means for her. I don't know if it's just like, here's the slap on the wrist so you don't do it again. Yeah. $10,000 per violation, Up though. to. Up to $10,000 yeah. per violation. Not to say that she would get that, but. But I mean, depending on how many violations they are, it'll just add even up. like a couple hundred dollars per violation would add up really fucking quick. What's the and odds? Does she... she have the money to pony up? My guess is no. Who knows? Okay, close that one. I feel like there's something I'm missing. Oh, yeah, this is the part that I was talking about, you guys. Client has been locked out of her PayPal account. So she did forget her password and she forgot it so many times that it locked her out of accounts. Girl, you got an iPhone. It is saving your passwords sometimes. I mean, there is a lot of margin of error, but still. So this person says she's going to end up with a default judgment like Alex Jones because she just fails to provide discovery. And then she will cry and say she was persecuted by the state slash Satan for not complying with their subpoenas and wickedness. I could see that. I know. I could see She's that. She's probably going to drum up a lot of support from people uh, because of that. And they're going to start dick writing her. Oh, the state is corrupt. And it's going to devolve into conversations about fucking conspiracy theories of the deep state. And yeah, for real. Like well, and I'm I not don't. not a fan. I mean, I, I obviously watched some of the stuff that happened with the Alex Jones trial, like the very obvious highlights that got replayed around social media quite a bit. But I mean, isn't it just worse for you to have it default because then you have no opportunity to justify or defend yourself. But maybe that's the thing is she can't defend herself. So she doesn't fucking care. But to me, that's like, you're just letting shit be handed yeah. to you without your lawyer even trying to like help you get out of this. Like, damn, what? Oh, well, Kara said, I bet she has bad breath. Yeah, dude, she <laughs> probably got some nasty smelling tonsil stones. She's going to pull up Not Mike Lindell. Got to love our my pillow guy. I bet she has my pillows. What a legend. I bet they specifically buy my, my pillows. pillows. People are bringing up good points. PayPal has customer service. Somebody said that they did it and it didn't take very long. What was she so busy doing in June and July that she couldn't answer the question? Tic Tac. We're very much aware. 
yeah, I'm very interested to see. Okay, what did that person say? Go back. There was one other thing that I think I'm forgetting. Go down a little bit. So if she deleted things, no, you were in the right spot. Oh, fuck. If she deleted things prior to the lawsuit being filed or knowing it would be filed, go down, and had no external requirements to retain the records, she wouldn't be required to produce them. But obviously, consumers who have receipts will provide that info to the state. So in this situation, having evidence that you properly ran your business would be useful. I think she doesn't have that evidence, obviously, but she knows what she does have is incriminating and is blatantly throwing a tantrum about producing it. I mean, that's the vibes it gives me. Like, she knows whatever she's going to provide is going to, like, basically fuck her right over. So they're going to try to not provide it. That just seems sketchy as hell. That just seems sketchy as shit. I know, right? So they need they need an article of faith like the Mormons where you uphold the law. <laughs> they believe in upholding the law. They do believe in not. upholding the law. Did you pay? Um did you pay your people? Jordan is notoriously bad at Venmoing the people that she needs to pay. I Venmoed her there. That's a shock. Okay, so my Usually her therapist has to text her at like ten o'clock to remind her to pay. I'm telling on you. It's funny, though. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so my my hairstylist, who I went to today, she texted me, um, and I posted all my stories about getting my hair done, right? And she texted me, my hairstylist, a screenshot of a message that someone sent her saying, shut up, you do her hair. Her and my husband, her and her husband are my favorite YouTubers. Their channel is the reason I left the church. Shout out, Brandy. Shout out. That's fucking amazing. We love to see that Humble stuff. Humble brag over here. <laughs> I fucking love that shit. We love it. <clears throat> okay. I think we're pretty good, right? I think we're pretty good. I think as far as like this stuff goes, I love that they call her Ding Dong. Ding Dong, the witch is dead. Bing Bong. I feel like. Um, as far as Brittany goes, I want to see a lawyer's response to this so we can see like what the... Like, what is the point? Like, what is their end game by going this direction, by not providing these things? Um, So I'm interested to see that. Hopefully, Emily Baker will do a video on this so we can know. But it sounds to me like she's fucked either way. I mean, that's just my take. But Yeah, sorry. That's kind of what I hope, because when you're scamming people. Like, I don't know how she could. Hi, Hannah. First time you've been off work early enough to make it to a live stream. So glad you're here. Um, Hola. I just feel like there's no way if she truly was scamming people, which it sounds like she was. I don't know In how you opinion, prove that. Yeah, you, that's a scam. You unscammed. <laughs> Who did you unscam? Who did you not scam? Who did you not scam? Huh? That's the better question because it sounds like she scammed everyone else. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know how this is going to pan out. I hope this would turn into like a whole last thing. I think Jen or somebody said Fundy Court. Because like I just, I would just love to fucking Fundy see that. Court. I would Fundy love to court. see that. And have it be like, you know, Johnny Depp trial. And so everybody can watch and we can all commentate on it. <sighs> I'm so excited for this. Hopefully it turns into a shit show because I love it. More... More than anything, I I just hope that this is making her, like, shit her pants. That's what I hope for. I hope she has to spend every day in anxiety over this bullshit. <laughs> for real. Same, honestly. It's really shitty to be taking, especially when you're taking advantage of people who are coming to you to um, do something. And maybe that's, they, at, at least from their perspective, or perspective is bettering themselves in some way or shape or form and then you're taking advantage of that that's pretty shitty it is and i think i don't know how to say her name lana lena you can correct me um but i i agree she's untouchable i i don't here's the thing i don't know if she truly has reformed herself into this christian person like authentically because she thinks she needed to or wanted to be better or if she did this because of the pending trial so that they feel bad for her But I think that she might have, if that was not the intent, I think that she might have gone so far. Ah, we got horny bots again. I think she might have gone so far to delusion (laughs) herself into thinking that God is on her side. 
and he will prevent her from getting sued. Luckily, I, I clicked off, so it won't be <coughs> ensconced forever. <laughs> Guess who's back? Back again. Damn bots. Um, but I don't know. I think she might be delusioned enough to think that the state of Texas is Satan and she is going to be protected by her Lord and Savior. And the Texas Attorney General is her sleep paralysis demon. <laughs> the sleep paralysis demon. <laughs> we need to get an update on that, B-Dong. Yeah, where is that? Hop to it. I need to know. They're in timeout again. Thank you, Sage. If I have to yeah, live in anxiety every day, I hope she does. That's what I'm thinking. If I have to have, like, severe fucking anxiety every day, I hope she's, like, absolutely losing her shit over this. I have serious doubts that Nude HD is the best adult dating website. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. Okay. Anything else you want to touch on before we before we end here? Is this a different one every time, or is it the same one? 5 a.m. for a run. That's whack. You are truly amazing. You should try your workouts. Oh, God. Y'all don't want to see me work no. out. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you, but no. Maybe it'll be a patron video. I would not. Um, I would definitely consider the uh, cute girl hairstyles tried out on me, Jordan. I could try it. Not well, though. Um, We'll probably touch on stupid Ruby next week. Um, I was going to say plug for the Patreon. We're going to be doing a patron exclusive video where we take you into the belly of the beast into Salt Lake. And we're going to show you all the Mormon things, including the billion dollar mall and the temple and the trap door to the temple and the trap door to the temple. I call it the baptism door, the trap door. Is it closed off? It probably is, but we might be able to see it, but where we got married and all that shit. So it's going to be super fun. We're going to take you on a whole adventure and you're going to love it. So go join the Patreon um middle and top tier for behind the scenes videos and then our watch party is on friday so yep. come and watch the cringe of saturday's warrior on friday it's gonna be on the discord so if you're not in the discord already check it out patrons only patrons only there is a patron only channel so i think that's where it will be uh but i will save it and upload it to youtube or not to YouTube, to our Dropbox, and you can watch it after the fact. You might want to do it that way because it looks like Discord only allows video to be inverted. So everything might be a little backwards. Sorry about that. The bench where that guy proposed to you. Yeah, if we can get over there, I'll show you. Dude, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's closed off. That bench might not even be there anymore. It, pro it probably isn't. Um, so sad I'm unemployed and can't join Patreon. Do not feel obligated if you would like to financially support us and you are able, you are more than welcome to and we would be so grateful. But you just being here and watching our stuff and liking our stuff and watching our videos is of utmost importance as well. So you just being here is important. So don't feel like you have to contribute to the Patreon in order for you to be appreciated. Yeah. And <clears throat> if, yeah, it's... It's not that special. We do a lot of cool things here. I think is almost better, in my opinion. But uh, but the exclusive content is good. It is good, yeah. I, today, realized I have enough bloopers to put up a little blooper reel. I just need to throw it together. It'll be a, just a little short thing, so. Um, cool little exclusive thing. There was something else I was going to say. Between Funny Fridays and us, you can avoid your religious trauma for an entire Friday. See? Killing it. See? Shout out Fundy Friday. They have been participating in the chat and hanging around. <clears throat> we love James and Jen. Um, so go check it out. They do awesome work. We reference them a lot. Uh, I offered and James accepted to do a little episode, a, um, a stream where we 
give them some good, funny Mormon trivia oh, and hang out. And they accepted, so I just need to figure out when that will work for everybody. And uh, yeah, it'll probably just be a Tuesday night stream like this. Can we make it like inappropriate Mormon trivia? Oh, hell yeah, dude. Okay. Hell yeah. Might get age restricted. <laughs> well, 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 you know, we'll push the envelope you know, a little bit. Non-platonic ceiling. Yes. Non-platonic ceiling. James and Jen, before you guys be get happening. married, we'll do a non-platonic ceiling. So just just so we're all on the same page. Um, I know all about the mermans. The mermans. Mermans. <laughs> Fandom crossover. Yes. We freaking love to see it. We <clears> love <throat> the both of you very much. And you guys could, y'all can participate in our Mormon trivia too. Okay, any final thoughts, McKay? I think this has been a good one. Sorry, I'm yawning a bunch. Salamander. Salamander. I'm going to answer every question with salamander, is what James said. Oh, okay. I like that. Salamander, white salamander power. Appear to me at my bedside, a white salamander of power. <laughs> Joke's on you. Up. I would love to be your sister wife. No, Jen. I always wanted to be the third wife so that the dynamics were worked out between the first and the second. God bless Queen <coughs> Christine. So if if Jen is sealed to you and you are still my wife, what is Jen to me? Your second wife. No, she's sealed to you. She's oh. not sealed to me. Oh, I don't know then. Is that my sister wife and I'm the brother husband <laughs> to yes. her sister wife? <laughs> that makes more sense. I don't know. We can we can work out the logistics. Don't worry. Anyway, I think we'll leave it at that with the conundrum of sister wife brother husbandry. What does the nanny do? What does the nanny do? <laughs> Just love a great uh, question. Anyway, we love y'all. Check out the Patreon. Check out the Discord because even if you aren't on Patreon and uh, you want to be on the Discord, it, Discord is a popping. Whole lot of awesome there. So. We love y'all. Uh, we'll get on Etsy orders. Which sister wife are you is the funny snark version of which. <laughs> See, I I just love sister wife so much. Okay, anyway. Anyway, this is Mistress McKay and Jordan signing off. <laughs> we love you. Thank you. Bye. Love you guys. Bye.